Welcome back to the uh, podcast episode with uh, with Hans here. Uh, we're going to talk today about look where the dog should be looking during protection. Is that yeah you know, about, the, about where the look where the dog is looking, how why it is important. How yeah how and why yeah yeah it's not really a long topic, but uh, we'll see. All right, so uh, when you train the dog for protection especially at first what you're doing is you are conditioning the dog to respond to your command mm-hmm. right and uh, as I already said before we start in defense drive because we want the dog to defend you yeah right it's not prey drive for playing with toys and stuff so when you uh, when you uh, uh, start, you know, you have a dog in heel position next to you and uh, you watch your dog, right? And let's say there is a person standing behind the tree or whatever mm-hmm. or, or kind of standing there, you know, mm-hmm. let's say 50 feet away from you or 80 feet. 80 feet is going to always, always the distance. Yeah. And, uh, and you, uh, uh, you watch your dog and when the dog is going to look around, right? And when the dog looks at that person, mm-hmm. right, you give him a command to alert, okay? And uh, and then, and only then, the decoy is permitted to act, right? What, what the sport does a lot is they, 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 they uh, do this uh, in prey drive, right? Mm-hmm. So they start moving around, and they allu- uh, so elicit or solicit solicit it doesn't work solicit the uh, aggression from the dog because somebody is moving right. That's completely wrong. You can see it on YouTube videos. Everybody, yeah. you know, always uh, the decoy is jumping around and agitating the dog before they even say the command, or they never even say the command. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so. Uh, so uh, you 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 know so the dog then is taught what that if somebody's moving around they're supposed to be aggressive towards them Bad. you know so you have little children running around right yeah and uh, and they uh, and the dog will chase them because that's a prey drive that's a, yeah. that's a primary instinct inherited yeah. and on top of it you just told your dog you want them to be aggressive when somebody's moving around. But that's how it's done all the time, mm-hmm. right? And then people uh, uh, say, the trainers say, well, I don't want a dog to alert on defense drive, in defense drive, because that's dangerous. I said, how is that dangerous? I think it's much more dangerous if the dog is triggered by a person moving mm-hmm. around really fast, yeah. right? Or doing motions and yeah. waving arms and stuff Which like that. Which people tend to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> And, and, and that doesn't, that does, you know, so, so when the dog is looking at the person moving around, that's not good enough for him to alert in sport. And I don't even talk about sport, but, but uh, even in sport, I mean, I don't train sport anymore that much. I'm, this is all about teaching real protection. So non-sport protection. You know, and I'm not against sport, but, but you know, in, even in sport, what you need to do, you need to first give the command and then the agitation starts, right? Then the motion starts, mm-hmm. right? And the only difference between sport and uh, uh, actual protection is in sport, you, you build it on prey, and in real protection, you build it on defense. Mm-hmm. So now going back to where the dog's supposed to look, right? So what I do, I, I instruct the decoy uh, not to do anything Mm -hmm. or have any equipment or anything like that um, which would become what I call undesirable association to the dog and uh, I command the dog to alert in Czech I use as pozor right and I say it specific way so Mm -hmm. it simulates the way I probably would say it in a real life scenario Mm -hmm. because if you just stand there and say pozor that doesn't yeah. mean nothing to you. Yeah, them. no, you always tell us this. Right, you got that me. training. <coughs> yeah, like you know, a little, yeah. little high, low kind of thing. Yeah, you know, and uh, 
and uh, and try to remember what you do so when you are in a scenario a real life scenario you uh, you try to at least do that same thing because you know mm -hmm. you trade as you fight and fight as you train right so so but when do you say the poser you know the dog is looking around right a little puppy you know you saw my videos of yep. puppies when i do them 10 16 weeks old and i say Pozor, you know, you see no shin the video, mm -hmm. you know, and that dog, yeah. you know, and, and, you know. I was there. I was, yeah, you yeah, were there, yeah, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, that dog yeah. has a rapport with me because I raised him from day one, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and so, so I say Pozor and he starts barking, right? But I say that Pozor meaning alert in Czech, mm -hmm. that's why, you know, in case yeah. you don't know. Uh, only if I wait for the dog to look at the decoy, Right. And if I cannot look at the decoy, I grab him by the collar and kind of aim him. Uh, really, actually, it should be left hand. I aim him so that he looks at the decoy. Right? Yeah. And as soon as he looks, I say, Pozor! Pozor! Right? And that's when the decoy comes at the dog. Yeah. And he comes in straight line at the dog. Right? Where in sport, he, you're moving laterally, left to right. In, in, in protection, you, you go at the dog. Going at the dog, you, you generate st stress. And in side by side, you generate prey drive for reaction. Okay? Now, we are talking about non-sport agitation yeah. because that's a completely different issue. And again, I'm not against sport. People say, Hans doesn't like sport. Well, I, I did sport a lot. And... Yeah. I was even second in nationals in uh, PSA. Yeah. Forgot the year. Uh, Which is good that you're mentioning this because some people might listen to different episodes. We don't know where they're listening. They could be jumping in on, a, on an episode, you know, different episode. So I think it's great that you say this right. all the time so they know where you're coming from. Right. I mean, I've done I mean, both. Yeah, I'm just saying something. You know, there's going to be hard, I would be hard, I would be hard yeah. pressed to find a, a system <laughs> of training and didn't you do, you know, people say, Oh, Hans, you should try this. I say, I tried 30 years ago and it doesn't work. Yeah. Know, or it doesn't work to my purpose. Oh, so anyway, so first you put the uh, look, you know, aim the dog at, and you got to wait until the dog looks at that person. And uh, so what you're doing by that is, is, is you teaching the dog to turn aggressive on person you made him look at or he's looking at if you enjoyed this content so far please subscribe to our channel also hans has a podcast channel called dog training for life check that out so you can listen to the audio version okay you commanded it, the which, dog too. yeah you command yeah. the dog yeah. and, and 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 but by by commanding the dog see it's like two-way street right like you command the dog to to alert when when he looks at that person right and then it evolves into when you alert the dog, he will look at the person which is most likely to be the one, right? Yeah. So, so, so you grab the dog under the collar and point him, at the, point him at the bad guy, and then you say the command, and only then the bad guy start agitating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not before. Not before, because once, so 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 you putting the dog in drive by alerting the dog, the pozor, or which means watch him. You know, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean what it watch him. I know people who train dogs in Gallic and Chinese mm -hmm. and whatever. It doesn't matter what Hungarian. you say. Hungarian, as long Hungarian, <laughs> as long as you are consistent. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter what you say. You know. And I suggest that you always use uh, language which you are probably not going to use in everyday life. That could be a, a podcast episode too. Uh, right. Okay, because there's conversation about that out there. I think there's... Right, right, missing. right. Why do you use foreign yeah, language? Like well, that's, see, that's a simple one. It's just so well, because you don't, you don't want the dog to respond inadvertently when you... When you uh, you're just... You know, like somebody must step in the street, right? Yeah. And, and you say, watch him. A car yeah, is coming. Yeah. And the dog... Bites a guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So you no. try to eliminate, I mean, not eliminate, but reduce 
the chance. Right. Well, you, you, you are avoiding, you know, yeah. and that comes with experience. You know, a lot of trainers, they know the, the, uh, the training, what to do this and that, but they don't know the unintended consequences. Yeah. Uh, so say, well, you can use whatever command. Well, that's true. But what is the unintended consequence if you use uh, English and then in and then you are yeah. on the street and, and, and somebody wants to step in the street and say, watch out, and the dog bites yeah, him. Yeah, bites him, yeah. You know, so, or turns on anyway. You know. so, so anyway, so, so you aim the dog and you've got to make sure the dog is looking at that person before you give him a command. And the person, the decoy, cannot move or do anything until he hears you to give the command. So it's kind of like you got to have a coordination between you and the decoy, okay? Mm -hmm. And the decoy could be in sight, but passive, no equipment, plaid shirt, jeans, no stick. Or he can be even out of sight. I prefer out of sight, around the corner, behind the tree, mm -hmm. you know. And again, in sport, they use blinds, right? Yeah. Yep. Right? Yeah. So, so uh, that alone is undesirable association for actual protection because in because in real life if somebody is hiding behind the corner and you want to get him your dog to get him he's not going to be behind a uh, yellow blind which has got yeah. pie on it right yeah okay yeah. he's yeah. going to be around the corner so so you gotta you gotta take it to different areas right you gotta take it to park and behind the strip mall at midnight and stuff like that okay and uh <clears throat> and so then when the dog looks at that person and you reinforce that look with the command uh the dog learns really quick oh that's a bad guy right so make sure you do not command the dog to alert if he's not looking at the person you want him to alert at mm -hmm. right and in real life scenario, and a lot of, you know, like I had a discussion on a, one of those law enforcement uh, Facebook pages, and, and I said, you know what, you really need to have the uh, dog on a long line when you're doing building searches or searches and, uh, or tracking or anything like that. And the reason for that is that the dog look. You know, if he's off leash, he will attack whatever comes at him first, right? Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. He doesn't know who's a bad guy, yeah. right? Somebody's come, and like I used to train Phoenix Children Hospital, and there's children, so you don't uh, you don't want the dog, uh, you know, to attack that child, of course, right? Yeah. So what you do, you uh, you you have the dog on long line, and in case the dog makes mistake, you can stop him. Yeah. You know, and people say, well, you can do it with electric shock collar. I said, well, maybe, maybe not. Okay, so I've seen shock collars, they, uh, uh, they no make the dog more aggressive. Or, or yeah. Even, you know, because or, it, it raises the adrenaline. Yeah. You just got to have a physical control over the dog. And I used to work with this guy named Paul Corso and uh, Jason Cotton in Georgia. And uh, the best, uh, basically the best uh, trackers, uh, practical trackers for police I've ever seen. They had my dog named Johnny, and Johnny had way over 200 apprehensions. Mm. And, uh, and, and they told, I asked him, you know, like, uh, is there a time when you, you, you should not use long line? Mm -hmm. And they said, no. And I said, like, never? I said, never. Mm. Right? And I believe those guys, right? And the reason for that, is going back to the, where the dog looks, right, mm -hmm. is uh, that uh, the, uh, the dog will redirect their aggression on the nearest person and so if you draw a line through middle of your chest uh, left and right and you, you generate the line 180 degrees from the left to the right mm -hmm. the dog and somebody appears in that half circle in front of you yeah. in, and in front of the dog dog may redirect on it yeah you know, definitely it should be at least 45 degrees, mm -hmm. okay? So, so, so 45 degrees from the center line to the right and 45 degrees from the center line to the left. If somebody enters that area, the dog will redirect on that 
or may well re very likely will redirect on that person. And if it's an innocent person, the person is going to get bit. It could be fellow officer, mm -hmm. or it could be just innocent bystander who just walk out of his house or from his car or yeah. whatever. And so, you know, so so you need to. So so that's about that looking, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, where's the dog gonna look? He's gonna look about forty-five degrees to the left and right from the straight line in front of you, and probably up to ninety degrees, mm -hmm. okay? So ninety degrees is like a safe zone. So you don't want to have anybody uh, one hundred eighty degrees when you tell the dog to attack. Mm -hmm. Even so, so when you teaching the dog to attack on the person who uh, he is looking at uh, then the, it's like a heat seeking missile right it's like a missile you you uh what do they call it uh fire and forget uh -huh. right so you teaching the dog that you fire him stay on the on person the he looks at and he got and he will probably stay on the target stay on the target yeah. right and that that that's important that you teach him that but he may redirect if there is different target coming from the left or right, even so that person is innocent and doesn't deserve to be attacked by and that. And then you can correct with the... And then you can correct him with the long line, long line. Right? Now, where is this coming from? Why do I... Why am I so adamant to know this? I always, as I already said many times, I always go to wild dogs or wolves when they hide and hunt. Right? So imagine wolf or wild dog or whatever is chasing... The prey the prey let's say deer or something right and suddenly from left or from right comes another deer which is now much closer well he's gonna redirect mm -hmm. why should i chase the deer which is 100 yards from me when i have 120 yards yeah on the right and that's what the dogs will do in a real life scenario in protection right so you gotta be aware of it but you want to mitigate that by Teaching the dog to 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 like the heat-seeking missile, like fire and forget, but you, you know, to go for that target. Now there's gonna be people, and which is very interesting, and I'm, I'm kind of making argument with people who are not here, uh, but but they will say, well, you know, I can send the dog on a person, and there's millions of people standing in between, and the dog will slalom on that person. Why does that happen? How, how can they be so sure? You know why? Because the dog is not targeting the man, but he's targeting the suit. Mm. Right? Yeah. So you have a guy 100 yards away from you, and dog goes after him, and there's a crowd of people walking in front of the dog, and dog will not bite any of those people, the and suit. will, and will, uh, will uh, uh, go and slalom through the people, and will target the, the man way out there 100 yards. But the reason for that is simple. The dog was poorly trained to attack equipment. And the only person out there is that uh, decoy with equipment is the decoy. Yeah. So the dog will go for that. Yeah. Right? That tells me if, if that happens, I'll tell you right now that dog is not trained correctly. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay? Makes uh, sense? Yeah. Right? Yep. So... so uh, so like there are other things okay for example about the looking okay what does the dog targets and what does he look at uh, like israeli defense whatever they call their homeland yeah. defense right school yeah. i think or whatever it's called their army no, their military yeah, yeah right they use dogs a lot and uh they found out when they have a terrorist uh, scenario that uh, the, the the hostages usually sit or lay down on the ground, okay? Okay. And the terrorists who are guarding them are usually standing up. Okay. And they found out that instinctually, without any training, if you send the dog in, in a room where there's 20 people laying down and way behind them oh. is a guy standing up with gun to guarding them, the dog will go through all those people laying down and will attack oh. that person standing up. Interesting. Yeah. You know. Just. But, yeah. Just genetic. Just. I, I really, uh, you know, I don't know why it is. I guess, I guess that person standing up is, is bigger right. a target or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know why it is. I, you yeah. Know, I don't Interesting. Like, 
I don't know everything, you know, yep. but I, I know that it works out that way. Mm -hmm. So like for the law enforcement who train dogs for hostage uh, type scenario, this mm -hmm. is a good knowledge to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so, so again, it's about looking, I guess he can see those people standing up uh, better or something, yeah. you know, yeah. I don't know, yeah. but that's how it works out. You know, you don't have to understand everything. You just gotta know it exists sometimes. Yeah, you know? It's like eating. We don't know exactly how everything works when we put that food in our mouth, but it, it, it feeds yeah, us. Yeah, we don't right? know what's in hot dog, like, right? <laughs> well, that, that's a whole different, but yeah. Same, same yeah, so, of, so, 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 you know, so what can we take out of this is, uh, is the, uh, make sure the dog, teach the dog, when you're teaching the dog to, is to make sure that he looks at the person you are going to command him on, mm -hmm. right? Because that way you're teaching the dog, whoever he looks at when he hears the command to attack. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you know, then you want the people stay oh, at right. least 45 degrees on each side from the direction you're sending the dog. You don't want anybody there, preferably 180. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, 90 yeah, degrees want... to each side yeah. or 180, yeah. you know, and... Uh, and, and, and you, 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 you don't want the, and then as far as the agitation goes, you don't want anybody agitate until, uh, uh, until the dog is released and comes at the decoy. As a matter of fact, eventually slightly advanced dogs, I don't allow the decoy to agitate until he gets hit okay. by the dog, you know, yeah, until yeah. he bites him. You know, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. All right. All no, right. this was great. Yeah, thank you, Hans. Yep. Awesome Any questions information. about this? Oh, um. I'm sure there will be, you know, by uh, other people too, and we're um, we're kind of doing some tests on this to put it on YouTube, the video part. So I hope you guys are are enjoying the uh, uh, the video part too. It's I think it's always great to see that emotion on Hans's face when when he's talking. So I think it, <laughs> I think it gives more more insight to your passion of dog training. So yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, I, I, it's it's a you know for me it's a passion. You know I uh, yeah. I'm doing this uh, okay. first dog I ever trained. I was 14 years old, yeah. and my I'm, I'm from professional photography so on my mother's side. My grandfather was professional photographer. My mother, my grandmother, and I got my first camera at, uh, when I was four years old. Uh -huh. And it was different era. My mom set up the camera, the aperture, and the yeah, first it wasn't digital. Manual, <laughs> Just she look out of the window yeah. and say, okay, aperture yeah. 17 or 22, yeah. whatever, and shutter speed 100, yeah. you know, sensitivity of the film. Yeah. Now computer does everything. Yeah. And, uh, and she set it up and she pushed me out of the door and said, go take pictures. Yeah. Can you imagine a four years old mother <laughs> sends them on the street, you know, yeah. to take pictures. Yeah. Anyway, so the first picture I ever took was of a dog. It was a drugstore and somebody went to buy something to yeah. the drugstore and uh, they tie the dog to this little handle yeah. there in front of the drugstore and you know dog was it was shaggy black dog i never forgot i wish i would have that picture mm -hmm. and um you know so so i guess that was my destiny the dogs yeah yeah it's a great story yeah. hans has great stories so you guys will be hearing a lot of great stories <laughs> yeah i like it yeah thank you hans appreciate it yeah no problem man it's, i enjoy this Thank you.